<laughs> well, hello everybody! Welcome to one hour of miniature goodness. Let me just check that you can all hear me. Welcome to everybody in chat so far. We've got uh, Scorplet, Eternal Frost, Michelle's in the house. Thank you for subscribing, Michelle. Thank you so much. And uh, we have Ty's in the house. We have Ta oh, Tal's in the house. Hello, Tal. A uh, bold GM. Hello. <laughs> what do you think of my hat? This is my old man hat. It, it kind of goes kind of the, the speedy look, but you know. <laughs> I'm wearing it. I'm doing it. It's it's happening. I, I, I couldn't find <laughs> Thank you for subscribing, Ty. Um, so I couldn't find my D and D hat, so I've pulled out the old. I pulled out the old man stops. So here we go. Um, today we are doing Wave Fourteen Druids uh, by WizKids Games. Absolutely beautiful miniatures. Let me just give you a quick close up of the miniatures, and then we can make a start. I get some zoom, some focus. Now I've actually. Um, moved my camera so it's kind of behind me looking over um, so I'm hoping I, I'll be able to paint more easily in front of you all um, instead of having to awkwardly move forward hi Gareth so these are the four minis now what I'm going to be doing today is we're going to just be using some nice dark greens and browns um, they are druids so we are going for a um, a natural, a natural, a nature, a nature feel. Uh, greens and browns, earthly feels. That's earthly, earthly feels. That's what I'm going for. Earthly feels. But before we start, <laughs> before we start, this one here, we've got some of that um, clear. Uh, thank you for the shout, Michelle. <laughs> we got this clear magic effect just here underneath that little thing. And this comes off. Um, so now I want this magic effect to be green. So what I'm going to do is, you might have seen me do it before, but I'm going to show you again. I'm just going to show you how you can change the colour on your transparent plastic very simply by just using your varnishes. So what I've got here is my old bubble packs so what we're going to do is I'll get, we'll get this, get this done first just so just so you know how to change the colors in all your transparent plastic because um it's really difficult to actually uh, keep the transparency on this this type of plastic um so thank you for subscribing deaf wormling <laughs> um so we'll get this changed i'm going to change this to green now to change your transparent plastic quite easily all you need is some um, acrylic varnish or gloss varnish now if you buy this type of varnish it goes crystal clear once it is dried so all we're going to do is give it a little bit of a shape not too much and we're just going to add some of this into here but now we don't need a not a lot we all we want to do is cover this piece of transparent plastic now this works with all transparent plastic miniatures so if you have any miniatures um, that are transparent this will work with that effect now I'm just using some uh, green wash by Valeco and I'll give that a little buzz now my um, my uh, my paint mixer is called warthog my paint mixer is called warthog um, now Philips, Philips paint mixer is called the the angry piggy so there we are <laughs> hello Rod how you doing so to make your to make your paint as I call it uh, to add to your transparent plastic all I've got in here is some satin acrylic what's going on <laughs> are you all cheering me because of my cool hat <laughs> So what I got in here is some acrylic varnish. You can use gloss varnish. You can even use matte varnish. It'll work with either of the varnishes. What you're looking for is something that goes. What's going on? <laughs> what you? What, what, see, stop making me laugh. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is add a couple of drops. <laughs> going to add a couple of drops of the green wash. 
to the varnish just a couple of drops blub, blub, blub. and all we need to do then is give that a mix now I am going to use um, a little mixer in fact I'm gonna to have to use an old brush because I didn't think about that before the show now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to mix in the green and just mix it in nicely with that varnish and just give it a nice little mix just let the whole thing change color hopefully what will happen is this will dry before the end of the show and I can show you the effect it leaves um, but what we want is a nice consistency going through all that varnish and what will happen is when, when, I, when, I, when I add this paint to the clear to the clear plastic uh, once that's dry it will leave a nice green hue all over the plastic it may not look like at the minute but once that's dry it will actually change the color of the transparent plastic to <laughs> what's going on everybody <laughs> what have i done <laughs> So, so as you can, can see, see I've got the, uh, it, look, it looks awful at the minute because I'm just adding this um, clear, <laughs> just this, this clear varnish to the, uh, <laughs> to the plastic. But what happens is when that dries, um, it will give you a nice green effect to your transparent varnish, uh, uh, varnish yeah, kind of to your plastic. And this works with all your miniatures that are transparent and it works with all the washes so you can have red purple blues all the different colors of the rainbow if you've got it in that wash color and all you're doing is you're adding adding a few drops like so to your gloss matte or satin varnish and then you can paint your different colors and change all the magical effects on all the whiz kids minis and make them any color you desire so what I'll do it now is I'll just leave that to dry. So I'm just... Thank you for subscribing, Philippe. <laughs> Cornucopia. Cornucopia. I can't even say it. Cornucopia. <laughs> I've only just started, and you've all made me lose my lose it already. My goodness me. <laughs> I don't understand. Hype train, sub gif or use bits to get to the next level. I don't even know what that means. Does anybody know what that means? I got it in my chat here. <sighs> Trying to do a show. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's not wine. That's Ribena. <laughs> Okay, let's start painting, shall we? Now, I got some nice dark greens and I got some nice dark browns. I'm not going to go with all the names um, because you can use any company's paints and I don't want to be stuck with one company and one paint. So it's easier for me to just say I'm using a dark brown, I'm using a dark green, light green. Um, that way there's no confusion um, because we all use different companies paints um, and they all roughly do the same thing so there's no uh, real issue I'm gonna find my pokey stick now there it is pokey stick from here and here you go <laughs> yeah I mean you'll know, you'll know if it's beer that's for sure <laughs> because I think I think I got drunk I think I got drunk at, on stream at Christmas time didn't I that wasn't good. That wasn't good. Pokey stick! <laughs> oh, what's that? You reached the level one hype train. What's going on here? It says share. Share what? There you go. Press the share button. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing.
Okay, we've got some nice green there, we've got some brown. And I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to put some white on there because I want to get all the faces painted as well. It won't take long as soon as I've got my paints laid out on the palette. A bit of white. And we'll go for some pale flesh for the faces. Warthog! <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, minimal colours used today. Minimal colours. We have some we have some light colour for the flesh. We got some dark brown, dark green, and some white. And what we're going to do is just plough it onto our miniatures. Um, and it'll give a nice earthly effect. I'm using quite a large brush. I'm just using the regiment brush just to get the paint on. Because what I, what I shall do is I will wet blend the paint as it goes on to the miniatures. So let's get some focus and then we can get cracking. There we go, that's about right. You can see I've been painting all day already because I'll paint all over my fingers. Um, anyway, we're gonna start with the brown. So we're just gonna go behind here Get that brown on nice and fast. And on the highest areas, I'm going straight into that green. Let's see if we get that closer. I'm just going to wet blend that green into the brown at the bottom of the cloaks. So we've got a nice two tone effect going around. And we're going to do this the same with the whole mini. Now, let me just get the tissue so I can remove excess paint off my brush. If I can, there we go, I can touch my toes. There you go. Now, because I'm doing the four minis, what I'm hoping today is the paint will dry fast enough that I can get back to the first mini and carry on where I left off. So I'm just adding the paint. And as I'm going down the back of the cloak there, I'm starting to add a little bit of green and we'll just blend that in with the brown and bring it down to a lighter color at the bottom and make it go all green. Nice and fast and it's very simple to do, but it looks awesome once it's done. Uh, by blending your paints, um, it just gives it a really nice look. Um, and it's very simple to do once you get the hang of it. And as you can see, the cloak's got a nice two-tone effect already just by adding that brown going into the green and then it's pure green at the bottom. And we're going to do that with all the clothes on all these miniatures because I want that earthly effect going with all the minis. Now this guy uh, is bare chested so we won't be painting that part yet but what we'll do is we'll work around the rest of its items and again we're starting with the brown on all the clothes and I'll just again move into that green take some green off, the, off my brush and start pulling down with the brown and that gives us a nice two-tone effect with our brown to green and we can work that way all the way around the bottom there add a little bit of brown now because this is behind the cloak you don't have to worry too much about painting when you can't see what's going on with that part of the miniature um, because you're never going to see it um, you have to really put all your effort into the front parts and the back of the cloak the parts that you're going to see the, um, as long as you get a nice dark color on the back and the same here on the back behind the cloak because this will, this will all be shaded anyway in real life this would be completely dark because there'd be hardly any light going into that area so we keep that nice and dark okay Let's see i can keep this in focus for you let's work onto the top of the cloak again i'm still using the same big fat brush and i'm just going around the face using my fingers to control and steady my hands 
Get more brown. And then we're going into that green. And we'll go red. And we can blend the brown into the green as we work. So we get that nice effect. And the same here, going straight down around. This belt will be totally brown, so we're going straight across with the brown. And the back of the cloak brown dark brown because that will be a shadow and the same on there and for his boots we are going to go full on brown and bring that down back and the same on the other side go to the back Just finishing off there. Now I didn't put any black on my palette, so we're just keeping it very dark brown. But what we can do is we can highlight the rest of it. So what I can do now is I'm adding a tiny weeny little bit of white to my brown mix. And I'm just gonna add that to the top of the boots. That'll just give us a little highlight on the brown on the top of the boots. Bum bum bum, bum bum bum. And just here and here. And just going down the front of the boots just to give a little highlight, a little bit more white, mixing it in with that brown, and bump, 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 done. Okay, let's move on to the arms. Again, we're going back to the green, mixing that in with a little bit of white and a little bit of brown. And we'll just work our way along the arms. And the same this side. Now we want to get that little staff done. So again, we're going back into that brown. This time with the staff, I shall keep the bottom dark. So keep the bottom of the staff dark, and then we'll lighten it up towards the top. And this time all I'm doing is adding a little bit of white to the brown again, uh, just white and brown. And we shall pull that dark into a lighter cane going towards the top. Moving it around, pulling up the brown, and it goes lighter and lighter because I've added that white to the brown mixture. And again, adding a little bit more white, and this will make the top of the staff kind of ultra bright. And the last part will be just pure white on that staff, as you can see. And again, boop, 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 boop. just got a tiny bit of brown in that white there. And just a tip, now I'm adding a little bit more white. And just for the end of the staff, we just add a little bit of white. And this will make the tip of the staff just glow a little bit more. And as you can see, that's already looking very, very woodlandy, should I say. Uh, very simple to paint this type of colors. You've got a lovely blend of greens and browns. Um, and for me, that's awesome already. And that's without ink washes and everything else. So we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> Thank you, Tal. You are talking to me, I hope. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for popping on tonight. It's, it's, uh, it's lovely to see all my little goblins. Okay, let's move on to the lady because that's so. Uh, this is a. I like this pose. This is really nice, and of, of course we've got some little leaves on this little little staff there. Once again, we are starting with the browns, and what we'll do we just fly in. Um, she's got. Let's, let's just double check the miniature. She's got. She's wearing a hood, so we can actually start off with a nice dark part of the hood and work our way around. Bring it down. She has got. Um, an open top, so we'll leave that open. 
and again we're just getting the brown on there and going to the places where we want the brown on the legs we're almost doing the reverse of the last miniature we've done um, it's a great way to uh, learn how to do the different types of painting um, and just blend in your paints and again now we're going to use some green and we're pulling the brown with that green um, to make it go into the folds of what she's wearing. I'm going to pull that around. I mean what we're doing here is really just the primer of the miniature, the main uh, blocking end should I say of the, of the colours, um, but because we're using all that wet blending as well it really does help the miniature um, and the finished effect looks really really earthly should I say. Um, and it's it just it's good fun. It's good fun to paint this way. Um, what you're doing is you're painting in a style that you're not too worried about the paint. Um, you're letting the paint do the work for you, um, and you're not worried about the end result because um, the browns, brown and green, always works so well together. Um, so it's you, you can't really go wrong with brown and green. Hopefully. Um, but by using um, a wet paint or wet palette as you call it um, you can actually blend all these paints together and give a really nice effect dark to light going all around your miniature um, I just think it's a, an easy way to paint um, it does take a bit of getting used to if you're used to high detail uh, but uh, it works um, and as a speed painter um, it's a great way to get some really nice effects on your mini fast <coughs> it's very woodsy yes it is very woodsy <laughs> hello Casper Kenobi how are you the force is strong with that one Now for this one, for this little uh, this little staff, what I'll do is I'll reverse the darker darker to light colours. So we start with the dark in the middle, and we'll just add that white to the brown. Take a little bit more white from the brown, mix that in, and then we'll pull it. So at the end, the ends of the staff will be lighter, and, and the, the same, same on this side. side. Or work lighter towards the end of the trees, the branches. And this is just by pulling the uh, dark brown and mixing it in with the white actually on the miniature itself. And then we do the same on the back, a little bit more white. And bringing it across both sides. Now we can add some green for those leaves. So a nice dollop, nice dollop, <laughs> a nice dollop of paint on the leaves. Just like so. We'll go to the other side. And then all we're doing is we'll add some white to the green, make it a very, very light green. And then we just add that to the tips of the one side of each of the leaves and this will give us a nice little extra light. Yeah, just like that. And that's an easy way to get your little staff done of little leaves. Let's see what else we've got on here. Right, let's get the back finished. <laughs> Again, we'll go back into the brown, we'll just quickly finish this one off here. And we go on to the back of the little hood. Oh, talking of hoods, 
Um, I've just started watching. I've just started watching um, Arrow. Arrow on Amazon Prime. Um, you know the Green Arrow. I've been watching that series. I think it's from 2012. And anyway, I only started watching it yesterday, and it's really good. <laughs> it's really, it's really good so far. I'm on season one, of course. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And of course, I really enjoyed the. Uh, uh, Leonardo, the Leonardo, the new Leonardo on the on the Prime as well. Um, I watched one episode of the Leonardo episode, um, on, uh, and I ended up watching the whole thing straight through in one sitting. I think I was up till about five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's that good. It really is worth. It really is worth watching. I mean, if you love um, art and uh, all that type of thing, you you really. You'll really like that show. And I think the guy who plays Leonardo, it, isn't he the guy from The Hobbit? Isn't he one of the isn't he one of the dwarfs from The Hobbit? Okay, so, so far, looking quite nice. Two little, nice little green and brown outfits. And they definitely are going that way I want. They got that woodland effect, should I say. Um, so I'm very, very happy with that so far. So we'll do that for the next one. He didn't play Gimli. That was, yeah, that's right. That's right, John, uh, D John Davis was Gimli in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Philippe, honestly. <laughs> Geek Curio, you'll he'll know the question. He'll know, Geek Curio will know the answer to that. Don't get me wrong, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings uh, is a million times better better than the uh, Hobbit movies. I did enjoy the Hobbit, and I enjoyed um, the Smog, the second one. Um, the Battle of the Five Armies, though. That was a little bit too CGI for me. It was a bit too OTT. Okay, once again, we're going back into the browns and the greens. So we're going to get all these lovely clothes and capes all done up. Um, we'll start on the back here. Uh, let's, let's see if we can get you in focus again. I do apologise if I keep zooming away. Um, I get carried away sometimes. So we're just going over the brown parts that we want brown. Uh, it doesn't take long to do. Now what I'm trying to do on each of these miniatures is make sure that even though I'm using green and brown on each miniature, um, each miniature will also have a different colour combo working on each of the different items that they're wearing so they don't actually look the same paint. Um, like for example, uh, this guy has his cloak in brown and green uh, this one I'm just doing green. Um, it's really just to have a little bit something different on each one and they're not the same. Um, but I also want to keep that forest woodland feel to these miniatures and make them look as green and brown as possible. Um, but uh, so you know, they, they, live, they, live, they live in the forest, simple as that. We want greens and browns and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but by wet blending uh, your paints, your greens and your browns, and doing it while the paint is wet, you do get a beautiful effect on your miniatures. And that's what I'm trying to show you today. Um, and it just proves you can really speed paint a, a really nice miniature uh, with the correct colours. Um, for that particular miniature because it just works I mean we've got lots of uh, greens here lots of leaves wood I mean it all just goes perfectly well together and what I've done today as well is I've mixed up a special I made a special mix for the base today and um, the base I've got three different types of sand they've got some little twigs in there and some little leaves and it's all stuff I've picked up from my dog walks with my with uh, Bonnie, you know, 
apart from the sand of course um, so if you can find all the stuff while you're out on your walks that saves you a bit of money and it's a bit of fun too you know if you get getting that if you manage to get out the house and go for a little walk and you pick up some little twigs and little items it's uh, it really does save you a little bit of money and it's also a bit of fun as well Oh, I haven't done the basin yet. It's, the basin is here. I'll do the basin after I've painted some of the miniatures. Hopefully I'll get that done before I finish today. So like I say, while the paint is wet, we're adding greens and browns and we're just blending them all over the miniatures just so they look really, really beautifully. Quite a, like I say, it's a, it is a simple thing to do once you've got the technique going and I am using a great big brush for this um, so that's not an issue either I'll do the same with the staff I'm going to start dark at the bottom just adding that brown nice and dark at the bottom and then I'm going to add some white onto my tissue and I'm just going to mix that in with my brown just to lighten it up and I shall start pulling that up towards the top a little bit more white and it'll just get lighter as we go to the ends of the staff and we can just pull that a little bit more now with this paint when you're doing wet blending you're better off doing it with quite a reasonably um, how do I put it runny paint um, so if you are a person who adds water to their paints, this is a good thing for you as well. If you're using really thick paints, that also can make it harder to uh, wet blend. Um, but um, when, if you make it too runny, um, you can end up where it just runs too much. So there is a fine line between too much paint and too little paint. Uh, but what I do find is with paints like these ones that I use, uh, these are MSP paints. They are, they are quite liquidy. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, so I don't need to actually add any water to them. Uh, they're they're a, a consistency that works really well for my wet blending. <laughs> Gareth. <laughs> Okay, again for the leaves, we just put it on a nice dark coat for the leaves. And we just add a little bit of white to that green, making it a much lighter green. And we will just put, add that to the tips of the leaves. This will just give us a two tone to those green leaves. And remember, what I'm doing now, this is all before we add an ink wash. Uh, once we add that ink wash, everything will be totally, totally uh, blended in completely. Uh oh, Muse's touch. Muse's touch. <laughs> Muse's touch. <laughs> the, 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 I, I gotta be careful what I say now. I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I drink my. I drink my. I know you didn't say it first because it's touched, but you you just appeared as soon as I read it, and I was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michelle, 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 Michelle. <laughs> See, look at you. You make me go painting off screen. Look, there you go. Right, let's get. Let's see if I can try and get these finished, eh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we summoned her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, as you can see, the browns and the greens look beautiful for your druid type miniatures. Now, druids are absolutely awesome 
Um, uh, especially the WizKids uh, Druids. Um, they've got some really, really nice Druid miniatures. Now, prep-wise for these miniatures, um, I did have to remove quite a few little mold, mold lines from these miniatures, um, but they still came out very, very well. Um, the, the mold lines weren't in too bad of places. What, a couple was around the hands, um, so I did have to remove a few mold lines around the hands, um, along the arm. One of the miniatures had a mold line, this one in fact, uh, he had a mold line going across the top of the head, uh, but that came away quite nicely and, and he's, he's looking fine. Because um, sometimes you can get mold lines and they're like in the middle of the face. Uh, not so much, I haven't seen any on the WizKids like that, but what I'm trying to say, I have had miniatures where the mold lines have been going along the face and that's awful because it, um, by the time you've taken the mold line off, you'd like re you've removed the, the nose or something. <laughs> Yes, these are uh, these are geek cure. These are plastic miniatures, uh, and they are pre-primed. They are pre-primed pre miniatures, um, but as you know, excuse me, I still prime them myself anyway. Uh, so what I like to do, and this is not with just Whiskey's miniatures. This is every single miniature that I paint. Um, I will always um, check for mold lines, and I shall. I always. Uh, add a primer to all my miniatures. Now, this has had a Vileco primer, um, so it's actually it actually works quite well. Um, but what today I'm just going over with some browns and greens. Yes, the, the uh, what shows up the mini the most. What shows up the mini the most? You're saying about uh, painting the mini is the best way to find mold lines is if i dry brush a mini once i've added all these this wet blending or the ink wash um that just makes any mold line just pop um and it can be quite heartbreaking sometimes because you've checked over the miniature and then you find there's a mold line and then once you've added that ink wash or done a dry brush of course it's picking out all those highest areas so if you've got a mold line anywhere on the miniature it instantly becomes a highlight This is a nice wee miniature too. I'll try to get it closer to the. So what we're doing again? Nice green at the front, and we shall add some green to the top of the cloak. Uh, we'll go more green on this one. And go over there. And on the back. And we'll bring that green down the back of the miniature. You get a really nice um, covering with the paints I'm using, by the way. Uh, it goes on really well with one coat. Um, and of course, now I've got the light on the back, I'm gonna have all the dark on the inside. So we're going back into that brown. And because the green is still wet, we can just work our way around and we can use that green to our advantage and make it as a shade going around. So we just quickly add that there. It also gives a light tone as well. And we just go across there, that'll be for the belt. And across there. And then we go straight into the one brown darkest of the browns remember now i'm only using two colors today all i'm using is a dark green and a dark brown so everything you've seen me do so far these are the only colors i have used to do everything today um what i'm doing to light make the colors lighter is by just adding white so in theory i'm just using white green and brown for all four miniatures um it just means that you don't need to buy hundreds of different colours, you can actually work it to your advantage just by having a white and by blending those colours together you're making your own shades. Oh and I apologise if you can hear my little puppy, uh, It's not. she's not a puppy, she's 10 years old now but she's barking up the back there. 
Um, it's been a very, very nice day today in Scotland. Um, so what everybody, everybody's walking past the window in the front room. And of course, my dog is like going ballistic because she's like, I want to go too. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go for walkies. Oh, we, we <laughs> tell, tell, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, our dogs like to embarrass us, don't they? They, they do like to embarrass us. Um, uh, when, when I play D&D &D with Tao, um, it'll either be his dogs barking in the background or my dog barking in the background. Um, and there's nothing you can do. Once, once the dogs are on a barking mission, that's it. It's game over, man. <laughs> Okay, just flying through these now. I don't even know what time it is at the minute. I'll have to have a look in a minute. Um, I will be raiding uh, Philippe's stream after mine tonight if anybody wants to hop along and raid his stream with me. Like I did on the last one, on the back and the here, we're just going to wet blend the brown so it's nice and dark behind the cloak because this will be a natural shadow behind it anyway. So we're gonna try and keep that nice and dark. And we can, just a little bit of brown there. And move back into the green for the boots, I think. And we've just got the staff to do on this one, and we are good to go. I just had a little bit of brown inside the hood. There you go, just, just dark it off. A little bit darker. There you go. Right, let's get some paint off there. Right, okay. Right, it's got a bit of dark again. Once again, we're going to start at the bottom of the staff. Let me get close. I keep, I'm sorry, I keep going up there. Well, it, I've got my camera in a, a new position. Um, and I think it's much better for you to actually be able to see me working in this position. It's more kind of over my shoulder. Um, so I think it's better for you guys to see how I work. Because I'm, I'm actually in a better painting position for myself. So I can actually show you how I paint better than I normally paint because I'm actually more, I'm in more control of what I'm doing rather than I was stretching over before trying to show you guys what I was up to. Um, okay, add in some white to that brown. Oh, are you talking about my neighbor? <laughs> Scott Pla Okay, so we're just moving that brown, pushing it up the staff. So we've got the nice little tones. You've got the dark brown getting into lighter brown into just almost a creamy brown. Nice and simple. And that's how we do that. Right, okay. I didn't realize what the time it was. What I'll do now is I shall zoom in and I shall show you the base work before um, I say goodnight to you all. I didn't realize it was that time already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. Um, I want to get quite close. So what we need to custom bases, we'll go back to this one because it's almost dry now. Um, what I've got in here is where I got three different sands. I got very fine sand from the beach. I got some little two millimeter sands from the beach and some four and five millimeter sands from the beach. Now, 
the way you do that is just by grabbing some sand and if you've got different type of sieves in your kitchen you have fine grain uh, sieves if your mum or your wife or your husband's a chef then you'll have all these different type of sieves um, and you can actually sieve the grains of sand into different sizes um, but if not just grab different sand from the beach dry them out and just get in different quantities but the reason why I like to have fine sand mixed in with my more grainier sand is because the fine sand fills in all the little gaps but what I've also done here is I've added tiny little twigs to the mix as well so we've got some tiny little twigs I don't know if you can see that there but these are little tiny little tiny little twigs and I've got some very old dried leaves so I've got these leaves and they're all dried out um, and what I've done there I've just scrumpled them all together and what will happen then is I'll, I'll stick these to the base which I'll show you now I'll stick these to the base and what happens then is once that's dry of course we'll paint over them and then and then we can get a nice little um, effect going um, and what I'll do anyway is once I upload this video as a YouTube video I'll give you full 360s of all the finished miniatures I'm just gonna find my PVA glue now PVA glue is just your normal PVA glue is just your cheap and cheerful from the craft shop PVA glue <laughs> right okay so for our bases now we can do this for all your WizKids miniatures and it doesn't matter if it's WizKids it could be any miniature it's very simple to do I've super glued the miniature onto the base and I'm just going to grab a tacky old brush now here we go and all I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding that uh, PVA glue all over the base and you can do this like I say with all your miniatures it doesn't matter if they're whiz kids games workshop uh, Reaper miniatures um, they it works on all of them and it's a great way to finish off your miniatures um, because personally I don't think a miniature is finished as you all know unless it has a base and anybody who knows me knows Mikey says <laughs> a mini's not finished until it's based okay so we've got that one in there all we do then is we go into my little magical box of goodness and you just give it a little shake and what will happen is all your little bits and bobs will stick the fine sand that I've added into that mixture will go into the little bits of the tiny little gaps and fill it in like putty and what happens then is you have a perfect looking little custom base and all we need to do that to that is we let it dry I use my little fun just to take off the edge of the uh, sand uh, but once that's dry you can paint over that completely um, and I'll paint that in brown of course and then you can pick out the little leaves and dry brush over it and it'll give it a really nice woodland floor effect to that miniature um, oh and I'll do, I'll do one more and then I'll show you that piece of plastic that I painted earlier okay one more one more one more one more Mikey do me one more time did I just say that <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness me. <laughs> okay, add in the PVA glue. Come on, Mikey. You can get to the end of the show. You can do this. <laughs> okay, so we've just added the PVA glue. It's super simple, super easy. Once again, we give the little box a shake. We just dip our little mini in there. 
mix it around give it a little tap and we go around with our little thumb just to take off the excess and we just let that dry and again you've got a perfect little base and that'll look fantastic as a woodland base and that's how you do your little miniatures for your effects for your bases Mm -hmm. Okay, before I go, let me show you the effect. I am so happy with this. Now, remember I painted this at the beginning of the stream? This is it now, and it looks the same. It's not, it's green. <laughs> it's green! <laughs> let me see if I put a tissue behind it so you can see it better. Oh, dear. There we are. You can see it now. This is what I painted at the beginning of the stream. It's dried now and it's not showing too well, but it's actually gone very green. Um, it's actually gone to it's actually gone to a nice green colour. It was it was crystal white, but now it's green. Um, and you can't really see it too well on this camera. I don't know why, but it's glowing green to me. But uh, anyway, it does work. I promise you. And that is green. Um, but it's not for some reason it's not showing up very well with the camera there we are it's a bit better if you go like that yes <laughs> it's green damn it <laughs> you'll all love it <laughs> yeah so <laughs> it makes you want to swear when things don't work properly it is green look look you can see it on my finger green what the <laughs> the point is anyway look it is gone green and it's still translucent and that is what i was trying to prove and it has worked and that is if you mix your varnish with your ink washes once it's dry it'll go crystal clear like it's done here and you can see the green now look you can see it and remember i'm using a very light green ink wash um if you use red um or purple i'm sure it would stand out much much more stronger but yes that is how you change the colors on your plastic miniatures <laughs> um <laughs> has philippe gone live so i can get out of here <laughs> yes he's just leaving now he's just leaving now right okay i'm going to be raiding you in about five seconds go on Go on, off you go, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, he's working on it. So, have you got any questions about today's little stream? I really enjoyed doing the. Uh, I I love painting uh, like woodland things. Let me just, there you go, there you go. But these these are these are coming out absolutely gorgeous for today's stream. Let me see if I can get this on for you, just to show you an idea. See, that goes inside like so. This is your magical effect. That goes in like so. And you can see, 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 it's glowing green. It's glowing green. <laughs> it's glowing green. But there we are. This is just by wet blending browns and greens. Um, and I do love the druids um, with their dress. Um, uh, using browns and greens on miniatures is such an easy way to paint, should I say? Um, so I'd highly recommend trying to um, have a go wet blending with browns and greens. Um, try on your old models if you don't want to try any new ones. Um, but it does work really well. And the effect can be really nice because what i'll be doing with these now once these are all dry is they will be getting a brown ink wash and then they'll be highlighted and of course i have to paint all the faces and flesh in um and they will look 100 percent different this is just your basic initial paint of your of your wet blending Good, I'm glad you're convinced it's glowing green. <laughs> I 
I did have a torch somewhere. I was going to put the torch behind it. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to I'm going to um, try, give try and give um, um, Philip a raid now. So could you let me know if he's uh, on? So I shall. <laughs> no, he's not on. Oh, what's he doing? He's making himself a coffee or what? <laughs> Thank you everybody for popping on to see me. It's been a fantastic stream. Uh, 